Hello and welcome to this brand new series and intro to Caden Live. For those of you not familiar, Caden Live is the video editor that I use for all of the videos that I create here on YouTube. It's an open source video editor that's primarily used in the KDE desktop environment. It works just fine in any other one though as long as you install the KDE libraries with it. Most distributions you use will do that for you. So let's go ahead and go through the install of Caden Live. As you'll see here, I'm on Ubuntu 10.04 and I've already gone ahead and removed Caden Live. It disappeared from my bar here and from my sound and video. So if you go to your applications menu in the upper left hand corner and go to your software center, mind you this is just one way to do it, it's the simplest way. Click on software center. If you're in an older version it will be add remove software, but this is the 10.04 the way to do it. In your search box up here, type in Caden Live. K-D-E-N-L-I-V-E. -E. You see the first one that it found is a non-linear video editor for KDE. It says for KDE, but it will work in just about anything you throw at it. Here's some information on it, just in case you want to know. It's got guides and markers, it's got copy and paste for clips, it's got real-time changes, firewire and video for Linux support, screen grabbing, and exporting to any FFmpeg supported format. Here's the website. The website is actually kdenlive.org. They've got all the features you can go through. You can download it from their site. You can actually do a live DVD or USB version. Here's the video tutorials, which are wonderful. Support forums, IRC chat, ways you can contribute, and ways that you can advocate for it. Here's, of course, all the different ways that you can download it. So I'll close that out. So from here, we'll click on the install button. It asks me to authenticate. And then it goes to in progress. Now one thing you might not notice here is the version number. It's 0.7.7.1. That's actually the very newest version as of the time of this video. If you're using an older version of Ubuntu, you might have to add a PPA to your system to be able to install this. I've pretty much got the default repositories with just a couple of extras, so Caden Live should be in the default 10.04 repositories. So let's go ahead and close out of that now that we've got it installed. To run it the first time, go to your Applications menu, go to Sound and Video, and Caden Live. You'll see here you've got your first time run wizard. Go ahead and click next. Here are the installed modules and available codecs that you can use. Click next. Here are the different video resolutions you can choose from. I normally choose 720p 30 frames per second because that's what my camera does. If you have a different type of camera or a different source that's actually going to put out 1080p or it's going to put out whatever your desktop resolution is, you'll have to choose that here. I'm going to choose 720p 30 frames a second and hit next. And this is where it's going to put all your project files. You can save anything wherever you want, of course. This is just the default location. Crash recovery is a must, because if the application crashes and you've got your project saved, but you've made changes since then, you will be able to recover. So we'll hit Next. And this is Checking System to make sure you've got everything that's necessary. Hit Finish. And there you go. This is the default Caden Live layout. Now, one of the first things I always do when I start using Caden Live is I move things around. That's just my preference. You don't have to do this. Let's go over what everything is first and foremost. First, you've got your menu bar at the top, file menu, edit, project, lots and lots of stuff in all these. Project might become important sometime, not quite yet. The tool menu I've never actually used. The clip menu I've still not really used. I've split the audio before, but not often. Timeline, lots of stuff you can do to the timeline. You will be doing this a lot, but normally not from that menu. Uh, monitor, still things that you'll probably be doing with the buttons rather than using the menu. View, you've got a ton of things you can view here, but all of them are checked by default. Settings, you can manage the project profiles, you can download all sorts of new stuff. If you click on wipes, here are some wipes that you can download. Most people hate wipes, so I would suggest avoiding them. There are different rendering profiles that you can install. See, there's 1080i, Nokia, YouTube. Let's go ahead and install this YouTube one. There you go, it's installed, done. If I go into render now, if I go to websites and click on custom, because these two, these were already here before. If you look at them, I'm going fast here, but if you look at them, they're actually 2000K. There's a custom one it created here though that's 3000K. It gives you a slightly higher quality video rate, which is nice. When I make my videos, I'm just gonna skip ahead there. I normally do them in 4000K just because I have a high, high definition camcorder. So moving on down the settings menu, you've got project profiles. You can do different iPod formats, screencasting for HD. Again, things that you don't have to do. I've not done them, but it is an option. Here's your different themes. 
here's some different configuration stuff you can do. You can tell it how to notify you. In particular, I would recommend turning off playing a sound. In Ubuntu, I have noticed there are some issues. If it plays an error sound, it can kill your entire pulse audio. So go ahead and disable that. The other things, it just pops up a notification when rendering starts and ends. That's great to have. You can configure your toolbars to add all these extra things to it. Not entirely necessary, but if you want extra stuff on your toolbar, you can do that. You can configure shortcuts to have key shortcuts. And you can configure Caden Live. There's tons and tons of options in here. Feel free to take a look. So moving on down, you've got your project tree. This is where you're going to be adding, removing clips, adding effects, adding transitions. So with the project tree, you can actually click on the add clip button. You see here you've got add clip, color clip, slideshow, title, template title, create a folder, generate countdown and noise. Let's go ahead and add a color clip. I'm going to make a five second black clip named color clip. And there you go. It just created an item in my project tree that I could add to the project. We'll get back to that. This is the effects list. These are all the different things you can put into your project. Different audio effects, audio correction effects. Let's stretch this down some to get your room. Uh, blur and hide, color, color correction. I'll go through all of these in a video at some point soon. Here's your clip monitor, also project monitor, and record monitor. Clip is for whatever clip you're looking at here in the side. You see if I hit play, it shows five seconds of blackness. The project monitor shows whatever you've got playing down here in the timelines. And the record monitor is where you would record your Firewire, your video for Linux, or your screen grabs. If you wanted to record the webcam in here, you can. So you've got all these options where you can create clips within Caden Live. I normally don't do that because I just prefer to use my other tools. So, and over here on the side, you've got your undo history. So as you do things to it, as you, like you see, I added a clip here. If I go back to clean, the clip disappears. If I go back to add clip, there's my clip again. You can go back and forth as many times as you want. There is the possibility you could crash the program doing this. I don't recommend it. But if you want to do it, give it a shot. Make sure you save your progress before you do. The effect stack and the transition tabs will not become necessary until you start actually adding things to the project. That will be video two. So down here in the bottom, you've got your timelines. The top three are considered video tracks. The bottom two are considered audio. You can add and remove. You see I right click and delete. Delete track one. Uh, you can right click on it and change the track type. You can make it into an audio track if you want. You see that changed to a gray color. I can also change it back. As far as whether you should use audio versus video, if it's an audio only source, it's best to put it in the audio track. I've noticed that there can be some quirkiness as far as, as what audio plays, if you've got multiple video layers that have audio on them or just audio only. And of course down here at the bottom you've got a bunch of buttons and I've not used many of them. This one is the normal mode. This is the overwrite, so if you drag something on top of another clip it just overwrites it. This one looks like it creates a split and it doesn't appear to work. Here's these different selector modes. You've got the, the arrow, like I'm using now. You've got the cut, where you can go through and make manual cuts. I hate that one. And then you've got the spacer tool, which you can use to create spaces on whatever track you're on. I normally just keep it on this first one, and I do my cuts manually. Here you've got your little zoom toolbar, where you can zoom in and out on the tracks. Here you have your video thumbnail, audio thumbnail. This one, I believe, is marker comments. I haven't used those before, so I'm not familiar with it yet, but I will be soon enough. And this is the snap, so you can make it snap to lines, you can make it snap to... For example, if I drag this clip down here, it will snap to the line. If I drag another copy of it, they will snap to each other. See? If I turn this off, they should not snap anymore. See, they don't snap. So we'll turn it on and just delete those two. And this, if you hadn't noticed, this is actually spastically monitoring where I am in the timeline. You can also set it to be frames, you know, it'll tell you how many frames you've gone or hour minute seconds. I prefer hour minute seconds to keep track of how long my video is. That's basically an intro to Caden Live, installing it, and the interface itself. Tell me what you think of this video. If you want to see more as far as the Caden Live series, make sure to come back next week. We're going to be setting up your first project. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.